So let's talk about this moratorium, all right? Now, listen, this is kind of crazy times. The CDC put this moratorium on the evictions. It was never really, really a legal thing. It was just thrown there because we're, we were dealing with a pandemic. And it's been 18 months, and now that is gone. Matt, will you pull up my computer real quick? Um, right here, you can see, and this is just from CBS News from a few days ago, 3.5 million U.S. Ho households could lose their home Golden Sachs estimates. Now, listen to me. Here's the fact. They're, they're estimating about 700,000 evictions between now and the end of the year. All right? So what does that mean for us? What this means for us, you, you need to flip this a little bit. What this means for us is out of those 700,000 people, how many people can we help out? How many tenants can we help avoid getting a eviction on their credit score, on their record? Because it is very, very, very difficult. Listen to me. We have a housing shortage. We've talked about it a ton of times on this show. We have a housing shortage. All right. There is not enough houses being built to keep up with the demand, to keep up with the population. There has been a reduction over the last 10 years from 2011 to 2000, really from 2009 to 2021, a reduction of, of what is it, 20 million houses that weren't built that usually are built during that time. So there is there is demand for these rental properties. There is, you know, people are once an eviction happens. Uh, somebody else is going to move into that house right away. So they, that puts the, the landlords really want to get their rental income back going, right? And so they're, they're going to try to get people that aren't paying out of the properties. Now we can save these people by helping them out by a simple method of cash for keys. All right, here's the thing. Some people that are either mad about the pandemic or they're mad about their landlord, uh, you know, wanting money for their property or whatever else or wanting rent that was already agreed on. Or maybe maybe they just got destroyed. Maybe this the, their their job or their industry or in their city or their town or whatever really took a hit during this pandemic and they just cannot figure out what they're going to do. That's where we step in. All right. Now, listen. You can pull the eviction notices from your county. That's going to be the best, most up-to-date. Now, what I will tell you is this. The counties are slammed. You are the lowest, 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 lowest priority for them to give you a nice, clean eviction list. All right. Now, there's some companies that put it together. I haven't really found one that's super, super accurate. Uh, if you guys know of one, please put it in the comments. I would love to check that out, love to test it out. But everything that we've tested out has not been really accurate. It's about 30, 45, 60 days behind. And maybe that's just because the last 18 months is all congested um, in, in, into um, the um, the recorder's office because every eviction gets recorded. I mean, it's a court, it's a, it's a court order so that, uh, though that's public notice. You can know, you can get a list of all those, but truly what I'm talking about is you're going to run. If you are calling on absentee owner properties, you are going to run into evictions. You're just going to run into evictions, right? You're going to run into a situation where the tenant's not paying. And now you got a landlord that's not happy. You've got a tenant that's not communicating and you need to bridge in the middle. Okay. You need to be the one that explains to these tenants what happens if they get evicted. Matt, if you would, um, these are, th this is what you need to communicate to these land to these tenants. All right. If they get evicted, I mean, this is going to stay, this could stay on their record for seven years. It's really difficult to get a, and remember, I just talked about the housing shortage and they, if people want to get into their own properties and they want to compete against other tenants, if they have an eviction on their record, it's, it's going to be really, really, really rough. It's going to be super rough. They better have a family connection. They better have a, put a significant amount down that they probably don't have, right? So we avoiding the evictions is huge, and we need to communicate this with the tenants. If the tenants just say, hey, listen, let them evict me. I'll get evicted whenever, and then I'll figure it out. Maybe they don't understand the ramifications of that decision, all right? So one, it's really difficult to get into another house or apartment. Two, it will affect their credit report for sure, right? And that and that's going to stay on there. That people can put uh, landlords are putting tenants into collections for unpaid rent. 
All right. It can affect. Uh, obviously, it's going to affect their ability to buy a house. I mean, that's easy. And then you, you have to show up at court for these things. If you don't, boom, landlord wins and you get all your stuff thrown out on the street. So it's really, really, really important that we go and we communicate with the tenants and say, listen, please, you have two options. You can have all these five terrible things happen, or I can give you 500, 1,000, 2,000, whatever it is, whatever market you're in, and I can give you this money to find somewhere else to move so that you don't get evicted from this property, all right? Because the landlords, a lot of the times, they don't deal well with emotions, so they're just going to let the courts handle it, and they're just going to be like, you know what, whatever. I'm going to evict this tenant. They haven't paid me. I've given them warning after warning after warning. It's been 18 months. They're still not communicating with me, and there's that friction, friction between the landlord and the tenant, and it is up to us to prevent people from getting evictions. And that is communicating really effectively with those tenants. And the way to open this up, the way to communicate with them, obviously you wanna to try to get them on the phone. And when you get them on the phone, you need to communicate. The land, your landlord is selling this property. I wanna help you move out as smooth as possible. As possible. I wanna hear your side of what's going on. And then just shut up, let them talk. Let them go through all of their sob story or all of their situation or let them be short with you or whatever it is, but just let them talk. Let them understand that you are on their side. You can help them out. If they feel comfortable with you, they will be open to you helping them. But if you think, if they think that it's all your advantage, you're just trying to get them out so that you can make profit and you can make money. It's going to be it's going to be difficult. It's just difficult to 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 uh, really effectively build a strong relationship with that tenant. All right. And that's what we really need to do, because I'm telling you, if you can. And on the flip side, I'm going to get there to the landlords. You go to the flip side, the landlords. Do you know how much money you can save them if they don't have to go to an eviction court? They don't have to go through this whole thing. They don't have to go and, and all of a sudden their property has somebody's personal belongings all on the outside of it and it was locked by whoever uh, gets everybody, gets all the personal property out of a property. You know, no landlord wants all this stuff in front of their property. Nobody wants to see that. It doesn't look good in the, in, in the, in the community. It doesn't look good for that property. It's just not good for for just the overall uh, community aspect of that neighborhood, right? So you can help prevent that. And that's what you need to go and you need to talk to those property owners. If people are stiff arming you and they're saying, well, I can't sell this property until I evict my tenant, this is the alternative. I, I completely understand Mr. or Mrs. Uh, property owner, but if I could help you avoid all of that, if I could step in and make it a lot smoother transa transition to get the tenant out of that property, would you be willing to work with me? Ooh, now we're talking real value. Now we're not just talking, here's cash for your property. You are solving a huge problem. Not only the amount of time it takes to go through this eviction, not only the money it takes to go through all this, but you're dealing with all the emotions and all of that. You're taking all the friction out of this process. You're playing middleman and you are helping both sides. And I am telling you, that is why we get paid so much. That's why we get paid so much. We get paid so much because we solve those problems. Nobody else is going to solve it. Who's going to solve it? Real estate agents? Nah, come on. The, the landlords and tenants themselves? Nah, come on. Maybe. Maybe if they know each other a little bit. But for the most part, there's, there's nobody. There's us. That's why it's such a great opportunity. Because now the landlords can evict these tenants. Before, there was no threat. The tenants could just, just you know, kick it in there and just chill. Right. And they're not really worried about this hitting their credit and really worrying about evictions on their record. Right now, there's a reason. There's a motivation. They need to move. They need to get out of there. Whatever situation they're in, they need to be able to find another place to live that is more reasonable for their budget right? Or for wherever. Maybe it's moving in with family. Maybe it's just a cheaper place. Maybe it's a totally different area where there's more job potential, but you're going to help solve that problem. Make sure this, this is the instruction for this training right here. Make sure that, you, that, that those tenants understand the five consequences of what will happen if they get an eviction. 
okay? And then on the other side, communicate with the landlord. Tell them, this is exactly what we do. This is exactly what we do. What we do is we solve this. We make this go as smooth as possible so you don't have to go through all the attorneys. You don't have to go through all the courts. You don't have to go through all the backlog of evictions that are going on. In Phoenix itself, Mike, in Phoenix is 20,000 evictions filed last week. 20,000. You think the courts are ready for that? (laughs) You think attorneys are ready for that? Do you think the landlords and the tenants? No, that's where we get in. That's where we step in and we really make a difference. So go out there, communicate with those um, property owners that you can help them out and communicate with those tenants that they can avoid the eviction. If you like that video, hit that subscribe button. We come out with new videos every single day. And if you want your questions answered, like you and I, one-on-one, make sure that you join us for the live show every single Wednesday. I will see you there.